we're going to be checking out the new and old version of the Republic of Korea Armed Forces rationed for immediate battle type. Is the rough translation. It's their standard issue field ration. First starting off with menu number one. Last time we checked out one of these it was menu two. The main course in this one is beef fried rice. It weighs two pounds 12 ounces and it contains about 1300 calories. It's not very high in calorie content for the weight and cubic space that it takes up. This thing has a three-year shelf life but since it's retort pouch technology it probably lasts more like five if stored properly. We'll see how well it held up. This packed in 1993 is the old freeze-dried version contents list your basic heating instructions. Tear notch at the top. Let's try that again. Here we go. This thing's incredible. It's insulated. It's really kind of just squishy. And you can see why. It's that cushion. Okay, so you're out the bat. Cardboard tray, spork, and that little 10 gram pack of Choco Balls. They're pretty much exactly like M&M's. Right, here's that main course. Double-sided FRH. And the rest of it. This is a like meatloaf or something. These are smoky or potentially like barbecue sausage. 100 gram pack of stir fried kimchi and a pound cake. Now, this is an exciting sight. I mean, it really is. You know, you're in for some good food, even if it's five years old, pretty much. That doesn't even matter. So that being said, let's get sat on your tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off by set this in the center. The main. Stir-fried kimchi on one side. Then your two meats on the other. I'm almost thinking you could potentially fit all three of these on one side and get that pound cake in the other. Because it's more like a scone. Somewhat misleading on its translation as a pound cake the heat might give it a little bit more life, if anything, for lack of a better explanation. Oh yeah, the Choco Balls. That is a nice, strong spork. Paperboard tray. It doesn't feel waxed, but it still does feel like it has a little bit of resistance to moisture. We'll see. Let's set that over here for a moment. So let's get this going. Hold this up. Oh yeah, listen to that. Beautiful exothermic reaction. The hydrogen vapor definitely has a distinct smell. It's been about five minutes, maybe six. Can wait about 11 more, and it should be ready. This is definitely ready. It's hot on both sides, even with the insulation and through all those components. That's probably the best flameless ration heater technology. It's really up there, and that's five years old. There was no permeation of oxygen into the flameless ration heater itself, which would deactivate the sodium over time or weakens it. Okay. 
That is the meatloaf. That is piping hot. It's like almost too hot to touch. There's the sausage. We'll leave the choco balls and the pound cake. Save that until after we tray up. That thing's molten hot. Not bad. Let's tray this up. Corn, peas, carrots, sesame seed, and maybe black pepper. The chunks of beef look like corned beef hash almost. A little bit of a reddish pink. Let's try a bite on its own. Hmm. Just as I thought. It tastes perfectly fine, but it's bland. All I tasted was the corn. The beef and rice, not much flavor. The rice itself is fairly glutinous, but it's not bad. Let's go for setting the stir-fried kimchi on next. That's where the flavor's at. And the aroma is just mouth-watering, like, like an incredibly tart, it's a little bit of, like a citrus almost, spicy cabbage. Look at that. Oh yeah. Let's set this on this side here. the meatloaf on the other side. This look more like meatballs. That's an interesting, very tart kind of barbecue sauce. I'm just gonna start with this over here first. Mm. That stir fried kimchi, it's spicy. Oh wow, that makes my face feel cool. It takes that fairly glutinous rice that's pretty bland on its own and takes it to a whole new level. Now let's check out this meatloaf. Wow, that's soft. It's like a melt in your mouth. It's definitely meatloaf, but they're in little chunks. I'm trying to get a cross section. Yeah, look at this. That is pure comfort food. It's in this really mild, also fairly tart and tangy barbecue sauce. Pair it with the rice. Hmm. It's all these different phases of flavor just in one little tray. You do it this way and you can really experience it. Get the full effect. Let's add that seasoned sausage. Ooh. Oh wow, that's a really strong smoked smell. Smoked barbecue. That's a sight. Oh wow. Bottom of the tray is nice and hot. The other components weren't steaming hot, like the rices. The rice is what you need to get hot anyway. Once you mix it up, then it's at perfect eating temperature. The smoky sausages, these things,
they're a bit dry and overly processed, but they still have good flavor. It's not bad. The tray itself, tray in the tray. One day we'll have a tray in a tray in a tray. Anyway, let's check this out. Oh yeah, soggy. Did they fix that? Anybody in the ROK or US Army is stationed out there like Matt and Elizabeth who sent this thing to me like two years ago coming up. I just wanted to find the old one so I could do this comparison. So you're just doing a very similar to review to the last one, a little bit more contrast. And that comparing and contrasting is very important to understand the evolution of rations and the improvements and sometimes not improving, like de-evolving sometimes. I think in this case, this is pure evolution. You gotta have some that's ready to eat out in the field anywhere. That rice, the way it absorbs the sauce, and these varying sauces, barbecue, a light kind of spicy, and then of course the kimchi, which is very spicy and varied in its spicy savory and everything sweet this meal every time it's just such a memorably mouth-watering food experience it really is let's check out that pound cake get this nice and hot oh yeah that's that's hotter than it was before Looking like a big old biscotti. Let's get our frosting ready. Not bad. Makes for that amazing little crunch with a chocolate frosting. I mean, that is exactly what it is. In this dense, dry, and pretty light on flavor, vanilla maybe at the most. I mean, it's just, on its own, it really does just taste like a dry scone every time. Keeps it from being too dry and boring. And look, it actually stays doesn't fall off, it actually holds on because it re-solidifies from being melted. And the, the trickiest part is actually getting it on there. It's the only way to enjoy that pound cake. Otherwise, you might as well take those things and pile them up. Maybe build a house out of them or something. I would love to be able to, like live off those for like a week that'd be great probably hate it after day four but you never know so let's take it over to that 1993 version see how that one's held up okay and we're back with the old style date of production is december 2nd 1993. it's an assorted vegetables with rice and beef that was a nice little hiss No smell, that's perfect. Maybe just a slight seaweed. This paper cover on the outside gives light protection against pinholes. Wow, look at that. Toasted sesame oil. A seasoning packet. That's probably like a red chili. A few other things added. We'll find out what else. Here's the main. A 
It smells like the ocean. Looks like daikon radish. Potentially a freeze-dried spinach. Beef. I know there's seaweed in there too. Green onion. It's like a freeze-dried salad. Not bad. All right, let's get sat on your tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off with rehydrating that main. It just smells like seaweed washing up on shore with ocean mist. There's that fill line. I don't trust that. That'll turn into soup, most likely. You add more water as needed. And in an Arctic climate, that's what you do anyway to prevent it from completely freezing or, you know, getting cold before it's hydrated. You just add small bits at a time. We'll close this up. There we go. That looks good. We'll let it rehydrate for about 15 minutes, I think. This is ready to go. This absorbs every bit of the water you give it. Let's get that little piece of daikon. Mm-hmm. That's delicious. They don't even add any seasoning or anything. I'm just on its own. Like if you were wanting to go low sodium, that's the way to go. All the sodium is in this seasoning packet. Although somewhat bland. It's the freshest flavor you'll ever get in a ration when it comes down to something with chlorophyll in it. Anything green, mmm, that's unrivaled. It's like having a salad mixed with your rice. If it was packaged properly, stored properly, if it's the right kind of food, if the fat is separated from the main like this, and the beef is lean, that helps. The whole smell changes. It's like... I'm telling you, it smells like tangerine. It's almost like there's some kind of citrus powder mixed in with the seasoning packet. We'll add just a little bit more water now. Let's see if this is rancid or not. It smells aged. It is not rancid. Daikon's got a nice little crunch. Man, people pay extra for stuff like this. This is fine dining. Toasted sesame with seaweed and some kind of tangerine extract or something. That is incredible. I mean, there's like this sweet citrus. Like, a, I like the smell, like the aroma of, of it and the flavor. And it's like that, a lot of different aromas. That's something I love. That's something that just takes you places. The rice itself, perfectly rehydrated, short grain rice, very short grain, almost seems like it's diced little chunks. I need some water. I just drank a, a half liter of water. That is food art. For what it is, I think it's one of the greatest food achievements. This thing is 27 years old and it is still a colorful, flavorful dish. Nothing has changed for any lesser value, I would say. This is the greatest freeze-dried ration I've ever had that is older than 20 years. 
full sensory experience right here. I mean, the amount of vegetables, the vitamin A, it's rich in vitamin A, fiber. This last bite or two. <laughs> I have to conquer this. I just ate these back to back. I'm pretty full. As the old saying goes, speed is the essence of war. And with that being said, the new version of the ration for immediate battle type, although more cumbersome, it's so much more versatile. And you'd be able to break this thing down if need be, re remove the flameless ration heater and the excess packaging and just strip it down to your basics if you really needed to. Not to say that this freeze-dried bibimbap doesn't have its place. It was built to last. Being vacuum sealed, that nitrogen flushed, vacuum sealed packaging preserves the food inside. If it's stored properly and it doesn't have any punctures, it will last indefinitely. Especially with the fact that that beef was so lean. There's nothing that can really go rancid. The oils being separate. That was brilliant. This thing would be great on a long range reconnaissance patrol mission where water is readily available. Or in a cold climate where snow is in reach. And if you had fuel tablets or something similar to melt that snow. And the time to do it. But this, you could still have a hot meal. Even when water is fairly limited. This on the other hand, if water is limited, it's useless. You cannot eat that dry. Eating it dry would cause severe gastrointestinal discomfort and issues, rendering the soldier potentially incapacitated or reducing their physical performance by an immense amount and it's something that is not even an option. They're still produced, it's just the packaging is no longer vacuum sealed. It does have the choco balls. It's pretty much like these things. Angry Flashlight out of Utah sent me this. And these are civilian, not vacuum sealed, not really built to last. It does have a nice gusset though. This on the other hand, it's built for war and for anything. This is built to last. It's definitely going to be serviceable after 20 plus years. This will not. Speaking of which, these were first produced in the mid 80s. They did not have a flameless ration heater. It was in a cardboard box and that wasn't nearly as serviceable overall. You need that flameless ration heater to get this stuff hot for when you're in an arctic climate. And you got vegetables in both of these. This thing was great. A spicy stir-fried kimchi. All that vinegar. That's great for your immune system. Great for digesting food. It's a digestion aid. And again, helps with your immune system. It tastes delicious. It's like the closest thing to a shelf-stable salad. So there you go. Well, anyway, this is Steve1989. I hope you liked the video. And I'll be coming back at you with something new. Or old. Alright, cool. See ya.